Okay, to get started, uh, fired up the application, and the first thing we want to do is a file open. Um, we can do this uh, several ways. Uh, normally, it would just be a file open, and you would uh, pick the photo you wish to pull into the program. Now, if it's a, if you pick a JPEG and open, you'll actually end up in the photo persona where you can start editing the photo. But what more commonly we'll do is start with a raw file. So I can either open or I can drag and drop. So here's a file explorer. I can just grab a grab an image and just drag it drag it onto the screen. Now if I've already got a photo there, it's better to drop it onto the border. Because if you drop it onto an existing picture, it will add it as a layer, which is probably not what you want. Okay, so here's our photo. Uh, we're in develop automatically. So we're going to take this raw file and we're going to balance it. Now, what we want to do, this is um, probably a 24, 30 megabyte file. Um, and we want to basically bring out the color uh, ready for editing, um, set the contrasts, black points, etc. So as you can see, this picture is fairly dull. It was shot on a dull day, and I'm sure the uh, robin would be a little bit more colorful. So what we're going to do is use these settings on the right to adjust the photo itself. What we'll do is we'll start at the top. Here's the histogram. So you can see different options along the top here. If you pick the histogram, it shows that um, it's basically the amount of light to dark in this picture. And if I move the exposure, if I move it darker, you can see the histogram moving over. If I move it lighter, you'll see it going across. You can see it clipping there as well. So if I just hit, that's the reset button. Just click that, every, everything in this panel will go back to standard. Uh, what we want to do is, is just brighten this picture up and make sure the range is, is better. Um, at the moment, it's, it's a little bit clipped up in the, in the, in the dark area. So what I can do to make sure that I don't overdo it, we've got three buttons on along the top here, which shows uh, clipping. And I'll show you what that means if I clip those two. That's whites and blacks, or shadows, and that's um, tones. You'll see a little red mark here, and that means that bit of the picture is pure white, which means it has no, no information in it at all. So it basically means it's slightly uh, overexposed on that point. If I move the exposure down, you'll see it disappear. It's actually got some grey in there now. But you also see that I'm moving the entire picture into a darker area. So I'll, I'll reset that for the moment. I don't think the overall exposure is too bad. And what I can do is move the, if I move the black points, that will darken what is already black. And if I, you can see at the bottom here, this is going too dark. That's pure black. It has no detail in it whatsoever. So bring that back. And to, for the, for the uh, highlights, we just want to bring the brightness down a bit until that little white, uh, little red marker goes. So now we've got the picture, it's got all the information in it, and we can start playing around with it. So this is usually my first panel I go to just to try and balance out um, and make sure nothing's blown out or too black. And now we can actually look at um, adjusting the contrast and clarity, etc. So contrast will uh, makes the blacks blacker and the whites whiter. So if I, if I ramp that, you can see the blacks are getting blacker there. 
I don't want to go too far, and that will start washing it out. So the actual uh, contrast isn't actually too bad. Maybe come down a little bit and then bring my brightness up a little bit. Too far. Bring it down. Ooh, there we go. So that's probably a little bit too too black there. All right. And for clarity, that will basically uh, make the image look sharper. I don't normally use much clarity in this side. I actually wait until I go into the uh, photo development to add clarity or sharpness because um, you want the sharpness to be added to the bird, but I don't want to add sharpness to the background. So typically, I'll show you what it does if I zoom in a little bit. If I move the clarity up, you can see the feather detail getting more pronounced. But you do have to watch that you don't overdo it. You can end up with, um, you can't particularly see it on this picture, but you can end up with some haloing if you're not too careful. And it can also start to look unreal. So uh, I'll I'll put that back. Another tip, if I want to re, uh, reset just that one bar, if I double click the um, button, it moves to zero position. Alternatively, I can I can move it up and just in the box, just type zero. That works as well. So it's a, it's a quick way of getting back. So I'm not gonna add too much clarity, I just, just say 10%. And then what I want to do is look at the saturation and vibrance. So I can move the, the saturation up. That will increase the colors in the picture. Let's just move back a little bit. And you can see, see the difference it's making. You can either make it almost black and white. Again, I, you can use it to make a picture black and white, but I wouldn't um, generally use that. I'd do that in photo. You've got more control. Um, with um, what what colours and how black they are. So I'll move the saturation back up, but I'll just add it up a little bit. And the vibrance is quite nice because um, it, it's a more subtle, it's affecting more the mid-tones. So you can see, see the picture coming a little bit more alive without being too overly colourful. Now, once we've got that, there's, there's other controls down here. Um, there's white balance. So um, think of that as the same thing on your camera where you can say whether it's outdoors, uh, flash, in shadow, etc. It affects the tone of the and temperature of the picture. So if I move, move the slider over, it's going to introduce more orange into the picture. And if I move it to the left, it's going to introduce blue. And you can see the Kelvin uh, range there. Let me just move that back. And you can also adjust the tint. Now, um, the main use for tint is when you're using filters. If you've used a um, uh, 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 negative density, high density uh, filter, um, sometimes adds either a, a, a purple or green tint to the, to the picture, and you can neutralize it by sliding the, this slider in the opposite direction. In this case, it's, it's actually okay where it is, but that's, that can be very useful. Shadows and highlights. Again, this is a more subtle way of adjusting shadow areas. So. If I had a particularly dark, dark area, I can I can lighten it. Lightens the dark areas only. So if I move out a little bit, you might see it better. So it's lightening the dark areas, or darkening the dark areas. <laughs> um, and the same here with the highlights. It will add high, more highlight to the highlight areas. Now that's quite quite useful when you want to get um, more 
the motion out of shadow er shadowy areas in a photo. This is an ideal one to be using that with. And that's the basic options down here. Now, if whenever you're going wrong, you do have undo. There's a couple of ways of doing it. So you can, you've got edit here. You can undo your last action, and then you can redo it or undo it again. I find I find the history bar down here much better. In that um, you've got the full history of everything you've done. So I can actually go straight back to the original photo, and I can see what it looks like, or more likely. Um, I've been playing with it, changing these settings, and I don't I don't want to bother with them anymore. So I'll I'll remove all the um, setting shadows area. Now, also, what's useful whilst you're uh, playing with the photo is these three buttons at the top here. So if you click on this button here, it's going to give you a split screen of your adjustments on the left and how your picture is was originally on the right. So it's a very nice way of making sure that you're not overdoing things um, and just checking checking what areas are looking better, what are not looking better. Another version is two side by side. Um, I, I personally prefer that, that method because you can zoom up and just check out a, a particular area. It gives you a good idea of what you're doing. Okay, so we'll go back to just the one view. <coughs> if you're just starting out in Affinity, that this panel is probably all you need to get used to in the beginning. Because you can just add add get the get the brightness right, you can get the color saturation right, and and that will enhance your photo. Um, immediately. Now what we're going to do is move on to um, a couple more tabs along here. And what we'll do is uh, we'll look at uh, the lens. Now this is like a manual way of adjusting any, any uh, uh, dimpling uh, or distortion you might have in a, say, a wide angle lens. So you can turn on lens correction. Again, not going to see much in this particular photo, but if I use the distortion, you can see it barely or pin, and that can that can make the difference on a on a um, a wide angle shot. You can start bringing in where walls might be leaning in. You can uh, you can adjust that. Uh, double click to reset. Vertical. Again, you, you you can sorry horizontal. You can give it a little bit perspective, which is quite nice. And the same goes for the vertical. You can adjust it. I'm just being extreme here, but you can see you can you can make some quite nice adjustments there. Rotation. Again, you can just rotate the image. But there is a, a better way of doing that, I feel. So I'm going to leave that alone. And scale is quite nice. So, for instance, if you have done a, uh, let's say you have done a rotation, and you've ended up with these white corners, you can just scale it up slightly and bring the picture in. And I'll just reset those. Here we got uh, chromatic aberration removal or reduction. Now you'll get this, you won't get it in this particular photo, it might be worth me uh, changing changing images actually. But where you where in a photo you've got uh, big areas of contrast between uh, light and dark, you tend to get it on the edges of buildings um, on bright days. You can end up with like a purple fringe. And this option here will try and automatically remove that along with it. And the defringing here, you can actually, you've got the purple colour, but you can actually pick what, what the purple colour is. I'll, I'll try and find a better uh, option in, in, in a moment. And these give you better controls over those defringing 
So I'll leave that for the moment because it, it won't show anything on this particular um, uh, image. Uh, post crop uh, vignette again, you can change um, any vignette that uh, the lens may have introduced, and you can up it or lower it, and it will make the corners lighter or brighter to bring it more in line with. Um, oops, sorry. Go uh, away. More in line with the rest of the image. Now, the one thing I do like, and I use an awful lot, is curves. So where we we saw using all those different sliders for um, uh, shadows and highlights and contrast. This is almost a, an all-in-one option, and, and it's very nice to, to use. So if you want to add contrast, uh, the usual is to add a, an S, S shape. So if I just grab those two corners, I'm o overdoing it here. But basically, on the left here, this is your shadows, your darks, and over on the right, your your lights, your highlights. So if I just reset that, if I just pull this corner down, you can see the darks are getting darker, and I can I can do an opposite here. You'll see the lights are getting lighter, too too light. So it's it's a subtle one. Generally, you don't you don't you have something more along these lines here, um, and you can introduce an extra bit of uh, life into the photo, and it's quite a nice way to work. Right. Next next one is uh, black and white. Now, you saw me use the saturation to just take all the saturation out. Um, that makes the picture fairly dull, generally. So what you can do is you can click black and white, but what you can do is you can say, okay, the blue's in the, the, blue's in the picture. I want to adjust uh, a red. That'd be better. So the red, red breast is getting lighter. Or I can make the red breast darker. So yeah, I can change, I can have an effect on how dark or light a particular colour would be. So you've got much more control over over the um, how to uh, spread your darkness, and you can get better contrast. That's always worth a play when you when you start looking at black and white photos. Uh, split toning. I'll leave that to a uh, another session. Uh, it's not something many people do, um, but it's a way of introducing color differences um, into into the hues, uh, the highlights and the shadows. Um, so I can I can just purely uh, adjust. If, uh, you can see it coming up here. You can just adjust those um, hues and saturation um, so you're, you're usually only using that if you want a particular effect on a photo so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that so as you can see it's very easy to, to try something out if you don't like it just turn that effect back off and it's, it's not not there anymore um, the final one is, is noise reduction and uh, detail refinement. Again, be careful with this at, at this stage. Um, anything we're doing here um, is set. So once we move into uh, photo, you, you can't get back to where you were. You can obviously still adjust it, but you can't get back to where you were. Uh, whereas in the photo side, uh, by using layers, you can you can adjust the picture non-destructively. So. Um, I can in introduce, uh, come on, wake up, uh, detail refinement. So I can increase the detail and the amount that's coming in, and you'll see the feathers coming up. The problem is it introduces noise into the rest of the photo, which can make it fairly ugly. 
So be very careful how much you add using this option here. Uh, noise reduction will do the opposite. So if we, again, if we look up here, I can increase the uh, luminescence. And you can see that making it much. But it's, it's like everything. If you make that smoother, you'll probably affect your subject as well. So again, be careful how much you use. You can, you've got an extreme button here, <laughs> so you can you can really filter it out. So that you know, look if you look at the background now, it's very very smooth. But you've also lost detail on the wings, so uh, you probably don't want to go that far. This is it's all a balancing act. Um, so what you, again with colours, you can you can uh, use this to reduce reduce the luminance in the, in the colour areas. Um, and I, th I think that probably is enough on that section. I'm just a little bit wary of time, so I'll just reset that. Let's just take those off. Okay, and you've got noise addition. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but um, it can actually be useful to, to, in some circumstances to add noise into the photo to make um, uh, to make make it more even in a, in a strange way. Not not here, but when you you move out, this isn't a, a good example. But you can add noise back into the photo. Okay. Now they're the basics. Um, one thing you, you probably want to do is, if I wanted to just change um, the redness on this on this area here, I can do selective changes. So what I'll do is I'll um, I'll roll back actually. Uh, no, no, I'll leave, I'll leave it where it is. Um, I can go to overlays, and this is where we start using the buttons on the, on the left here, in conjunction with with uh, the changes we've already done. So everything we've done has been to the master, and what we can do is we can add either a brush overlay or a gradient overlay. I'll do the gradient first. So if I just add gradient. And um, here's the grade. Uh, that's the white balance. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, I thought I did the wrong button. And what I can do is just add a gradient onto the picture. So you typically do this for maybe um, a sky. You just want to uh, drop it down. Uh, that would be a linear. Uh, you can do elliptical, where you might just want to do it over a particular area. Oops, there we go. And I can just drag that onto the, the area there. Um, or I can do radial, which is you know, just a circle. An ellipse with the uh, main, <laughs> major and minor the same. And what what you can do from this is that now any changes I make um, is only going to be affected in that area. So you can see I've, I've increased the saturation in that area, but you can see it's it's just within that that area there. So what I'll do is I'll go back. Go. The other way you can do it, well, let, let's do it to a, a normal gradient, um, like for a sky. We just pull that down. Okay, and um, then what I would do is, for instance, um, I could drop the saturation up in the top, top of the picture there to give it more focus on the bird. Even drop the vibrance. So the, the background's going more out of the way, uh, and the black point I can increase that if I want, and it's only affecting the top of the top of the image. 
if we go to overlays, if I want to start working on the master again, I can just click on master. And now anything I do will be done to the main one. And then if I want to go back, I can just go back to the gradient. And what I'll do is I'll add a, another one here, which is a brush um, overlay. In this case, I can, I can use a brush. So to make the brush bigger or smaller, you can either type in, you can either use this slider here to change the size of your brush, or use the um, uh, square brackets on your keyboard next to your return key. And that's why I use all the time. So if I'm looking for a particular area, again, I, I can just go onto the onto the front of the bird there, and it's only going to be affected in that area. So again, if I come back to this area here and change the brightness, you can see it just affecting affecting the front of front portion here. And that's basically overlay. So they're quite useful. Um, I personally don't generally use them. I, use, I do most of this work in photo itself. But just to finish off, we've done all the adjustments we've got. We've got the perfect picture we want. And what I'll do is now hit the develop. When I hit that, it will take your raw file, convert that into uh, an affinity file, and drop you into the photo um, editing suite itself. That is going to be another another session. So really, this was just trying to get a photo, just adjust it so the color balance is right, the, the um, exposure, etc., etc. So there's one final thing we need to do, which is actually save that as a JPEG. Um, actually, now I'll cover one small thing which is cropping this is the crop tool it's also available in the develop module and I can just readjust that and center it on the bird so I can pick up the corners and just position position the grid where I want it you can either say make make it the same as the original the ratio the same as the original picture or you might printing for a competition, so you want it A3 uh, proportions. So that's now, that will fit any A3. Uh, when you've got it exactly where you want it, hit the apply. There we go. And finally, now we'll output that as, as a, a JPEG. So what you'd normally do is save this file first as a, an affinity file. So just hit save. Just going to call that my test file. <coughs> so I can always come back and load this up and continue editing at a later date. But if I want to output that as a JPEG, I just do File Export, and you've got your various uh, export types: PNG normally used for websites, JPEG, commonly used for printing and used on websites. Um, I won't bother going through all of the ones, but some people who have used uh, paint shop, uh, sorry, um, um, think of the name of the product. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so you can save it as a PS, PSD file. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just do JPEG. You've got the size of the image. Um, you've also got the quality. So if you're if you're printing this, generally, you would probably just keep the quality at 100%. Uh, for those of you who are printing you or for displaying, um, if you go into the More tab, um, you can pick your ICC profile, which for overhead projection is sRGB. So typically, you'd pick that if you're going to send them off to Lou to uh, be projected in a competition. Um, there is a way in one of the uh, settings at the top where you can make that the default. And after, once you've done it once, you don't have to, ever have to do it again. 
So once you've got that, you can export the file. Um, it can be to the same folder or somewhere else. It picks up the name of the file, so it's my test file JPEG. So that's fine, and it will save that as a JPEG. Um, so that's pretty much an introduction. Um, I don't want to take it any further. So, and we've concentrated on the develop tab uh, or persona, as, as we like to call it. It's, it is powerful, um, but I generally use it just to get the balance right in the photo before editing it in in photo, and, and that will be a different session. So thank you very much.